Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Model Railroad Adventures with Bill. So last episode, I have the uh, sub road bed in place. And on this one, I'm getting ready to uh, start with the track work. Right now, I have my ON30 track just loosely laid out on the sub road bed. Just to make sure that it didn't look like I had any uh, real uh, too sharp curves, uh, you know, kinks, areas where clearance between equipment would be a problem. And right now, everything is looking pretty good. Uh, you know, I'll tweak locations of the switches a little bit. Uh, this area will be uh, some buildings, you know, the sidings, uh, sort of simulating a bit of a log dump and some other fun things around logging. But I think this is going to work. Uh, that switch is far enough back from the joint that I can get some sections of track in there and everything laid out so that uh, when I pull it apart, it's not going to be a problem. That long incline in the back looks pretty good. So I think this will work. Uh, what I will do next is I'm going to be taking cork and I will start uh, putting it on. Same way as before, I will uh, put it on using carpenter's glue because I have no intention of ever taking it up again. And uh, starting in the areas on uh, the loops and the narrow, I'll get the cork laid out, glued, uh, and uh, go from there. So it is taking shape. We'll uh, see how much I can get done in uh, this episode, but I'm guessing I'll have at least all of the cork laid and uh, probably started on some of the track. So it is late Tuesday evening, and uh, the past few evenings I have been out on the layout, and I've been putting down cork road bed for the ON30. I started at the uh, high point right there, Working my way down and around, and I've still got quite a bit to do, you know, put something in on that siding. Still got to do this area down here. But I've gone from there, bring it around, and I've gone up to the second level of the uh, spin going around, right to here. It's going in pretty good. I'm using my uh, Tight Bond Premium Wood Glue. That uh, sets up fairly quick and it tacks very quickly. So it will grab the cork and hold it in place uh, pretty well. I have also come in and just as I did on the O scale below, I uh, notched the cork and also then cut slits in here using uh, just a pair of cutters. Makes it form easy. And the side that you take these notches out, it'll actually give it a natural curve even before you put it down. And then using uh, clamps just to kind of hold things in place. And I gotta come in, I gotta squeeze that down so I don't want that to set up. So I'll move this a little bit farther now that it's tacking. I uh, use clamps, scrap boards, everything just to kind of hold it. And I'm doing uh, two six foot sections at a time. So from where I'm here, to where I'm clamped over there, that's a six foot run. So it goes pretty quick. And this will be the second six foot run that I've done tonight. So I've gone from uh, essentially here, you know, I'm kind of working my way around. So I'll get 12 feet done tonight. Uh, probably not do any more and I'll pick up tomorrow from this area, run it around, which should get me, well, actually I should be able to get it done up to there tomorrow. Uh, then what I will do is I will come back in and start doing this area for where the switches are, get this area done, I'll get that siding done. Then I'll come back, make sure the track's off, and uh, I will take a knife and a straight edge and cut so that I can separate uh, the layouts. I'll cut the cork in those locations and uh, go from there. I've still got plenty of cork, so I got more than enough to finish what I'm doing here. So everything's working out pretty good so far. So uh, next segment, I should have a lot more done. Maybe even have uh, all of the cork in place. So back in a little bit here. So Wednesday evening has come and gone. I have uh, the cork laid pretty much yeah, pretty much everywhere where I need it right now. So all of the uh, main lines are done. 
I've got the cork laid in the area where I'm going to have a little bit of switching um, ability for the uh, ON30. Might add a little bit more at the end of that track. I do have the uh, little logging spur done. So this has turned out pretty good. Uh, the uh, cork that I got was just enough. And uh, I got a little gap in that one. That was like one of the first ones that I did, but it's glued down, it's not going anywhere. That'll be easy to cover. So this part is done. Next thing is to uh, move the layout, kind of move it over to this edge, and then uh, pull the HO scale layout away from the N scale layout so that I can get access to the uh, cabinets uh, right there on the uh, far left because that's where uh, I've got rail joiners. I've got uh, some Code 70 rail joiners left from the HO scale construction because I used Code 70 rail over there. Those should work on the ON30. Once I get those out, I, uh, I can start doing a little bit of track laying. <clears throat> I gotta figure out exactly where I wanna start. I also have some switch machines over there that I bought at uh, Caboose Stop Hobbies during the trip uh, earlier in the fall when I was going there with uh, some of my mom's issues. Uh, I'm going to use those on the ON30 layout. So I've got a bunch of switch machines. I've only got, I think it's, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, I think five, six, six uh, switches on the ON30. So I will uh, start to figure out how I want to mount those. But uh, it's making progress. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, within the next, next week or so that I can start to run some trains and test out the track. A lot more work to do first, but uh, making some headway. So it is Thursday night, a couple of hours after work, and I have the uh, cork roadbed down for uh, the entire layout. So I have everything in place, and again, the track is just sort of sitting there. This little area, a simple little area for switching, uh, the uh, far little siding over there, maybe a service area, maybe a loading dock, I don't know, little spur to come off. I'll have a sort of log dump feature over here that I saw in a book. Uh, this area still has to have a bridge. I'll do that later. Coming over here, you can see that I also did uh, put cork on uh, that complete curve. I will do some additional bracing on that this weekend to kind of add another brace uh, so that it picks it up right about there and then another one over here that'll pick it up right about there so that when I do cut out the uh, piece for the bridge and I build the bridge, uh, I've got additional support so that the roadbed and subroadbed are not going to flex and, and give me a problem over there. So I'll add that this weekend. I've got uh, another support that I will add right here for this side of the layout. Uh, there's, even though you can't see it, there's a little bit of a give. And I'll put a screw you know, somewhere right in here to hold that in place. And then I cut the cork. Uh, i got a lot of cork to cut right there. And then next things will be to uh, you know, go over there, get the uh, rail joiners out, and then go over there uh, because I got the switch machines. And I will bring stuff over to here and start doing track work. I, you know, I might get this little section done first, come up over to here. That, that will be, again, my key point. You know, it's base zero for the elevation. That's the start of everything right there. So that switch, that switch will go in. Actually, that'll be my first thing. And then I'm going to kind of work my way around and pick some of this stuff up. So that'll come later. This weekend, I will also go up right in there and all those greenish boxes. That's all my ON30. So there's a, a variety of freight cars, there's a, a variety of locomotives, and I will uh, bring them down just so that they're handy so when I start uh, getting things wired and electrified, I can do some tests on those. I do have a uh, Heisler, Hessler, I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, I am looking to buy a uh, Shea, uh, you know, Bachman ON30 Shea. If I can get a good deal on one off eBay, I'll bite the bullet and get one of those. Otherwise, I've got a variety of other narrow gauge locomotives. 
and I will see once I get the track in place whether they have the capability of pulling anything up these grades. You know, they should, but we're going to have some fun finding out, and uh, we'll all explore that one together when the time comes. All right, uh, maybe another couple of segments as I get a little bit farther on some stuff, and uh, then we'll wrap this one up. So I broke out an older eBay purchase, an ON30 Pennsylvania passenger train. Uh, and I've got another car sitting on another piece of the layout, and I'll show that in just a second. But this one is DC. Now when I get going farther on the track, I will just power it via uh, another old uh, throttle that I've got, just for testing purposes. I don't have a uh, you know, panel, a handheld DCC, for this one yet, I'm gonna be getting one here in the near future, but I can use this to kind of test. And uh, the uh, baggage car and mail car, I'm using as a uh, sort of a gauge in this area, just to make sure that I've got clearance on track. And you can see how I've got the uh, other switch set up. That's about where I'm gonna put it and then uh, have it tie in over here. Yeah, nothing is down, nothing's permanent. Tracks are just sort of loosely in place, but I'll use that as my gauge car. Now, another thing that I am going to do over here, because this is where I'm gonna have my tightest radius curves, and when I actually get to laying track, I'm gonna put the ON30 track to the outside of the curves. You know, I'm gonna have it actually as close to the edge as I can get it, and it's not gonna make any difference because I'm gonna have scenery you know, coming off on this side, I'm gonna have scenery coming off on this side. So the fact that I'm not using the, uh, the center of the cork line for uh, my track alignment doesn't make any difference. I will do that just to get a little bit extra on the sweep of the curves. And I'll do that all the way across. You know, I'll move it all over to this way. That will uh, give me a slightly larger radius. You know, everything in here was laid out using 18 inch uh, radius track uh, to about the center of the plywood. So if I'm getting out to the edge, you know, I'm maybe getting up to, uh, you know, 19 inch uh, radius, you know, 18 and a half, something like that. Just gives me a little bit more wiggle room for uh, the drivers on uh, the steam engines, because it'll be almost an exclusively steam engine uh, layout for the ON30 part. And you'll see, once I get a lot farther along and I'm testing track, I'll get all the ON30 equipment down and uh, you know, start running it, see what will be able to go on these curves and what won't. And I know I've got a couple that probably won't be able to manage the curves. I got uh, one of the articulated uh, big, big things that Bachman had in their ON30. So that one's gonna be more just for taking some pictures rather than actually running. But anyway, more to come. Track lane begins on the ON30. So I'm starting with this switch. This will be my zero point. I'm starting to drop feeders. Uh, this is a DCC friendly uh, switch. Um, all of them are. I am running uh, my uh, hot wire, or well not hot wire, but uh, the, uh, the wire into here so that uh, when I change the switch, it changes polarity and that will run through the switch machines that I have. So should have that in good shape. I've got my hole drilled to uh, run my throw rod up through. First piece of flex track, kind of in shape. So this is how it's gonna run. And like I noted in another segment, I really don't care that it overhangs. Um, I will be careful when I'm running until I get scenery, but I'll use sculpt a mold to kind of go up here. These tracks will not necessarily be ballasted as such. You know, they're in the mountains, they're dirt, they're rock. They'll have a little ballast, little crumbles, just stuff. So getting this piece in, and what I'm gonna to try to do today, which is Saturday, is get it run around up to at least uh, the crest, right about there. And then uh, put some power to it and see just uh, how the curves handle uh, the locomotive. And uh, go from there, but we're making progress. Well, it's early, Saturday afternoon now, and I have from the uh, switch, my start point. Track is connected. I've got feeders dropped all the way around to here. Now, what I'm using the clamp for is to uh, kind of keep the track in place. And 
Now, uh, you know, it's FlexTrack, it's gonna hold its shape. But what I have found, and many of you that work with FlexTrack know this to be true, is that, you know, you can get your joint perfectly smooth, but then when you uh, flex it on the opposite end, the tracks uh, suddenly go out of alignment as just everything shifts. So what I have found is that if I put a clamp uh, just kind of close to the end point, you know, about six inches, it leaves me where I can wiggle the end to get it into final position, but that keeps the tracks from moving down on this end. So, uh, you know, I can make some movements there, the tracks will move up there rather than move down here where I've already got them cut. So I can adjust that. I can nip the rails to the length that I want, and then I can add the other section, get it aligned, again, nip it, uh, then I can put the joiners in, and then I can, you know, go on down to the other end and adjust it and keep going. But uh, I will just get one more section of track in on this piece, and then I'm gonna put some power to it, and I am going to see if I can run an OM30. And I will try the engine that I've got down there, that uh, Pennsylvania. Now I have never run it since I bought it, so I don't know if it's even gonna work, but uh, you know what, we're gonna find out here in just a little bit. So still early Saturday afternoon, and I am done for right now for what I'm gonna do. I've got uh, track connectors, I've got feeders dropped. I am up to uh, just a little bit past that clamp, and that's good enough. I've got some tracks in down here. Again, nothing is glued down at this point. I'm gonna be doing some test runs. And I do have a transformer set up, and I've got that little uh, narrow gauge uh, 260 over here, Pennsylvania. Now I have run it just a couple of minutes. Uh, I was hesitant at the start. It hadn't been run for I don't know how long. But uh, let's get it moving on my tracks. So I did just come back in and clean the tracks. I wiped them off with denatured uh, uh, alcohol, just to kind of give them a quick clean. I'll come back in doing no ox ID after I get them all glued down, but let's see here. Little engine's working. This is my test engine. So if it makes it around in good shape, that means my uh, curves are not too sharp because none of the drivers are blind. So it needs some space in order to ride the rail properly. And there we go, it's almost at the crest. It's working. And she's at the top. All right, I'm happy for that. Let's bring it back. I'm also happy with the engine since it had never been run before. And this is a DC, and of course it's gonna stall out there. That's all right. I know it works, so that's the main thing. I will uh, continue to break it in for uh, running, get it lubricated a little bit. Let's bring it back down. I will go and give it the uh, hand of God nudge, and then I'm gonna hook up a couple of the uh, passenger cars just to see how it runs. Pull in one passenger car. The other is uh, the couplers. On uh, one end of each car, the couplers are broken, so I've got to fix those. This is running off of an old Tech 2 power pack. Some of the more, oh, didn't even know the passenger car's got a light in it. Oh, that's kind of cool. This is running much smoother than it was just a couple of minutes ago. And there she's starting to slip. I can see it, so this is gonna be fun when I uh, have this done. Let's get her up here a little bit farther and take her right to there. Let's see if it'll come back down on its own this time. There we go. So what I will do is I will get all of the track working and then I'm going to come back in and on this one, well, I'm not sure, I might use caulking 
uh, like a caulking adhesive to kind of get the tracks glued into place. It'll have sort of an off brownish color and that way I can use that easily as I weather the ties and as a base for other stuff. Now, I don't have it wired in beyond the switch, so it's not going to go any farther until I get some of those feeders wired in. But I'm a happy camper. This works. So I think this is going to be it for this video. Next one, I should have uh, all of the track in. And uh, I'll probably put a temporary piece in where that uh, long uh, bridge is going to go just so that I can run some trains. So anyway, keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.